Hey there, I'm Bailey and welcome to my channel where we discuss all of the tips and tricks necessary for you to live a life of adventure. You know, there's nothing quite so nice as watching a dog galloping across the woods or the beach or whatever while on a hike. You know, just seeing them run free I think just makes everyone's heart happy. However, there's a lot that goes into having a well-trained off-leash dog. So today's video, we're going to dive into where can you legally hike off leash because there's a lot of places where you can't and you shouldn't, um, as well as how you can maybe go about training your dog to hike off leash. Um, now I do want to say that this is just based purely off my own experience. Um, while I do have quite a bit of animal training like background, I am not a professional dog trainer and so you know if you really are wanting to train your dog to hike off leash and are having problems, you might want to consult some sort of trainer. Um, but you know, I have done a lot. I basically lived for a month and a half with my dogs off leash 24 seven this past summer while hiking the San Luis Loop and have gotten a lot of compliments on how well trained they are. So hopefully some of these tips on what I have done can help you going forward in the future. Um, I do want to say before I get into the video that if you are looking for more tips and tricks to help you start hiking and backpacking, especially if you have a dog, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm putting out new videos every week, at least twice a week, going over some of my top tips. Um, so without further ado, let's begin. So first things first, I really can't talk about hiking off leash without mentioning the places where it's legal versus where it's not. Really. <sighs> Any good hiker who's following Leave No Trace and wants to make sure to keep everything the way we found it and is respectful of laws will be following leash laws. So if you are getting out and about, please be sure to inquire about if it's legal for your dog to be off leash or not before you start hitting the trail. Um, there's quite a bit of land, especially in the west. I can't speak as much to the east because I just don't have as much experience. There's quite a bit of land in the western United States that is very dog friendly and very friendly to having off-leash dogs. You just really need to know where to look. So there's a couple things that I usually look for when I'm trying to decide if some place is off-leash friendly or not and some specific verbiage that you should read in the rules. So the first thing that you will usually see if a dog or a piece of public land does not allow dogs to hike off leash, it will usually say dogs must be on a six foot leash. Pretty clear, right? Like there's no getting around that. Um, I would say, please be respectful of that. Some people try to get around that by dropping the leash and saying, well, they're on a leash, but I'm not holding it. And it's kind of like, well, really like follow the spirit of the law if you can. Um, that just helps, you know, keep everyone happy. And make sure that that place stays friendly to dogs at all instead of them saying well no more dogs if you're looking for a place where you can allow your dogs to hike off leash there's kind of two splits here generally what you'll see written in the language is either dog must be on leash or under control or it'll just say dogs must be under control I do want to point that out because that's very different than saying dogs are allowed off leash. To me, there's a huge, 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 vast difference between control and off leash. If your dog is under control, you may unclip the leash, but they are not running around like hooligans. They are not chasing wildlife. They are not running up to every stranger they see, every dog they see, running amok, pooping everywhere, like just being a hooligan. Whereas if they're off leash, they could be under control or not, or they could just be running around like crazy, you know, whatever. Most public land where you hike will say under control. I have not really found any that says that your dog may be off leash other than like dog parks or like specific dog friendly beaches. And I will say if you are wanting to let your dog run around completely crazy, I would encourage you to perhaps consider just going to a dog park and then keeping your dog under control or on leash when you are out hiking. That just makes everyone's experience better and honestly safer, especially if you're using multi-use trails um, where you might run into ATVs, horses, mountain bikes, that kind of thing. So, you know, just be sure to kind of follow those laws. Usually you can tell, um, like if you look on a map, sometimes it'll say if they're like the Nat Geo maps, um, the rules for if dogs are allowed to be on leash or not. Um, usually some sort of sign at the trailhead, you can always call whoever manages that piece of property. Um, typically, I will say that most national forest, most BLM land, 
and some wilderness areas allow dogs to be under control. Um, typically, national parks, dogs must always be leashed. You know, they're not usually even allowed in the backcountry. In my experience, most state parks, if they allow dogs, they have to be on leash. Um, and then again, wilderness areas, it's like a 50-50. Um, most of my experience with wilderness areas is in Colorado, and it seems there that the wilderness areas that are kind of in the front country that are really accessible to um, urban areas and have higher traffic tend to say that dogs must be on leash. Whereas wilderness areas that are a bit further away and hard to get to and see a lot less traffic tend to say that dogs may be off leash um, or might, must, might be under control, right? So it just really goes to show that you never know and it's good to look into the rules before you get there. And if you think a place is off leash or allows your dogs to be under control instead of under on a six foot leash, and you get there and the sign says differently, please just respect those signs. Like, it's annoying, it's happened to me. Um, you know, my dogs are relatively well trained and I prefer to have them off leash nowadays, but you know, you have to do what you have to do, right? So, and just check into it before you go. But those kind of guidelines should kind of help you um, of national forests, BLM, some wilderness, under control, national parks, state parks, regional parks, and other parts of wilderness is usually on leash. So take that as you will. All right, so you've established now where you can hike with your dog off leash and where you can't. Um, so the next kind of step is to, first of all, evaluate your dog. Do you think your dog is going to be a good fit for off leash hiking or not? Um, you know, I talk a lot about choosing the right kind of dog for hiking and not only that, but really considering your dog's breed and breed history. And this definitely comes into play with off leash hiking. Of course, many breeds were never on leash until, you know, the last century or so, but there are certain breeds today that tend to do better off leash than others, or at least are easier to train to hike off leash than others. So usually you're like herding dogs, your sporting dogs tend to do well off leash, and that's really about it. Some of your working dogs, whereas like, honestly, terriers can just be a terror to train to hike off leash. Um, huskies tend to be really hard to train off leash in some of those working breeds, not all. Um, and it also just kind of depends on your dog's personality too. So you probably know by now that I have my terrier named Skittles. And when we got our first terriers of family growing up named Spike, who I also have pictured, um, we were told that you should never, ever, ever let a border terrier off leash, like ever. And honestly, like him and our other dog, Fergie, they used to get out when we were, you know, in middle school and bad about leaving the door closed and they would run and it was just, yeah, like we definitely believe that. However, Skittles has proved that um, it really depends on the dog. It depends on your training background. I also think the influence of other dogs, having her with my German Shepherd, which is much easier to train, I think has made a huge difference because she's around this other dog that is very reliable off leash and they just kind of like influence each other right she's a good influence in that case so it just depends on the specific dog but i would take their breed history into consideration as some dogs are much more likely to have a high prey drive and much more likely to be hard-headed and difficult to train than others um, hounds really come into mind here as well i didn't mention them before but you know sight hounds will shut off if they see something and scent hounds if they smell something their ears just close and they have selective hearing after that point so just depends on the dog but take that into consideration no head that you might have a challenge or a battle for you depending on your dog so after that point no matter what kind of dog you have you should do this anyways but i would really 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 work on having a solid recall that's step number one um, you know, for starters, you can work on this in your house where you have them doing something and you call them, you say, Fido, come. Um, and when they come, you give them a treat. So start doing that from all over the house, make a game out of it as what I would really recommend. Um, that way they know when you call that you always have something good for them to come get. So that's like the first thing is you just need to have a very good recall on your dog. And then start adding in distractions. Maybe try it in the yard. Um, really, when I first started letting my dogs off leash, it tended to be in places with a very good field of vision. So um, I think of when I first started doing 14ers, 
I would unclip the leash when we got above tree line, um, especially when we started having to like rock hop on boulders just because it seemed a lot safer to me and I still think it is to let them off leash so we can all kind of pick our own paths at our own pace and not twist an ankle. But the nice thing about that was it was easy to see them. It was easy to see our surroundings. Even though there's lots of marmots up there, it was easy to see other dogs, other people. And so I felt better about letting them off leash. Um, when I really started getting into off leash hiking was when I went and did a road trip to the Pacific Northwest and hiked the beaches in Oregon. That's when I like started more consistently letting them off leash. And it was nice because you could see far away, you could see other dogs, other people, um, and have a very good line of vision. I mean, that's not gonna stop them from chasing stuff, right? Or running off, not listening to you, but you can at least see them. They're not going to disappear into the undergrowth, never to be seen again. You at least know where to go find them when they decide to blow you off. So I would really recommend when you are trying to take it to the next step is maybe try out in an open space. And maybe an intermediate step that you might wanna think about would be to use a long line. So a leash that's like 10, 20, 30, even 40 feet long. Um, you know, you can use anything like paracord or like some sort of climbing rope with a clip on the end that you can make yourself um, to let them out really far, but still have a handle on them. So that way, if they don't listen, you can call them back. Of course, that can be a little bit cumbersome because it can get stuck on things and tangled and such, but it's kind of a nice safety line if you are in the in-between as far as letting your dog off leash. So another option is if you have access to this, um, you know, going to like a dog park or if you have someone that you know that has private property that's fenced could be another good option because you can let them off leash and if they do blow you off, then it's okay because they're not gonna be able to go anywhere, right? So um, just make sure that as you're going along, continue to give your dogs treats or praise for checking in. Um, it might not be treats, you know, my dogs both do really well from like verbal and physical touch rewards. Um, and that's still what I use. I don't even bring treats with me anymore hiking and haven't for a long time. Um, and I really didn't even to train my dogs to be off leash, honestly, because especially Prima does very well um, if I just tell her that she's a good girl when she comes back, because she's a herding dog and that's enough for her. So, um, but make sure that you continually reward. Um, one thing that you can definitely do that I do with my own dogs, which actually doesn't help us in some of our other things we do, but I reward her for what's called checking in. And you will hear this in the dog hiking community occasionally. And it's basically is whenever your dog turns around and comes back to just say like, oh, you still there boss? You say, yes, good girl. Like, thanks for coming, checking in. Now you can keep going and hiking. Um, and they'll kind of do that periodically. I think herding breeds tend to do it more just because that's kind of what they're bred to do is to check in and make sure everyone stays together. But you can encourage your dog to do that. And that's a good habit to keep them from wandering super far off. So the next thing I do is don't be afraid to scale back and kind of try things out um, and go back and forth. Just because you've started unclipping your dog from the leash doesn't mean that um, they automatically have full freedom forever. And just because you're a little nervous doesn't mean you can't try things out from time to time. So sometimes when my dogs, especially Skittles, decide that they are having a day where they just really don't wanna listen, um, I will put my dogs back on leash. And honestly, like sometimes they need that. They need to know that if they're not gonna listen, then the leash needs to go back on. Like they can't just roam around and not listen to you. Um, it's great to reward them for being good, but you also need to show them that, you know, if they're not gonna listen, then they don't get that freedom. And then over time, as they prove worthy, you can give them more and more freedom. I would really highly encourage you never to let your dog out of sight. Um, personally for me, when my dogs hike off leash, I will let them go up mm, maybe 10 feet in front of me max, depending on where we're hiking. Depends on how forested it is, if there's good field vision or how empty the trails are. But I never let them go out of sight. They know that. I never let them chase anything. Um, and really when there's other dogs or traffic around, they stay pretty close, either walking, usually walking behind me after the first mile. Um, and that's just nice because then they're not bothering other people again um, and letting other trail users enjoy their experience as well. Um, you know, if I want to let my dogs go run around like crazy hooligans, we'll usually go to the beach 
um, or someplace where I'm not going to see anyone, and that's our specific purpose. When we're going out to hike, um, once they you know get their sniffles out and that kind of thing, um, they're perfectly happy to walk behind me, and they're still getting the same amount of exercise and freedom. And it's nice not to just be attached to them all the time. So real quick, before I dive into my last couple of tips to help you out and give you maybe a couple other things to work with, I do want to address aggressive dogs and hiking off leash. So this is probably an unpopular opinion and I'm probably going to have people like strongly disagree with me, but I'm going to say right now that Prima is not very friendly to other dogs and really does not care for other people either, honestly. Like she tolerates people. Um, and really does not like other dogs getting in her space. She's obviously, she's perfectly fine with other dogs once she gets to know them, but she's not wild about other dogs running up into her space, which is just another reason why you should keep your dogs under control when you unclip the leash and not just let them run around because of dogs like her, that even when she is on leash, it's almost worse, honestly, where she really says quite vocally that she's not friendly. Um, However, I still am fine hiking off leash with her because I know that she's not going to go out of her way and I know that I have her under control just as much off leash as I do on leash. So when she's off leash, she's always hiking next to me anyways. I know she has a reliable recall. Um, honestly, I can walk by someone who has either a very well-trained off leash dog or an on leash dog with Prima off leash and she will hardly even look at the dog. And so the problem only comes with other dogs running up. So I personally don't have a problem hiking with her off leash. I mostly just either avoid very popular trails or if I'm going to hike on a very popular trail, I keep her on leash just for everyone's safety and for liability reasons. Um, but I don't think that you should necessarily give up hiking or give up the idea of off leash hiking if you have an aggressive dog. And if you're really concerned, you could maybe consider trying a basket muzzle. Um, but that being said, just be responsible about it. If your dog is easily triggered and will go after other dogs and go out of their way to go after other dogs or people, then I would not recommend allowing them to hike off leash. Okay, so that's kind of like how I trained my dogs to hike off leash, but I wanna talk about five quick tips to maybe make it a little bit easier for you, especially if you have a dog that's a little bit difficult to train or probably sitting here like, well, that wasn't very helpful. And I'm sorry, because it really is just teaching a good recall and taking it slow, in my opinion. But these tips might help you. So the first one is to start by hiking somewhere without a lot of distractions. And I kind of said this with the open areas, but even above and beyond that, pick a trail where you're not going to see a lot of people. Maybe you don't think you're gonna see a lot of wildlife. That way you're giving your dog the opportunity to succeed rather than the opportunity to fail. So by going somewhere where you know that they're most likely going to be good, you can reward them. Um, show them that they're gonna have a good time and then the next time you go out they're more likely to be well behaved and you're just building up those good behaviors. Along with that my second tip is to find a good role model dog. So like I said I was lucky enough that um, I have a terrier but I also have a German Shepherd so my terrier was able to have the good role model of hiking with my um, very well behaved um, you know need to stay close German Shepherd and I would say the same to you. Maybe you have two dogs, but even if you don't, maybe find a friend who has a well-behaved off-leash dog that they can um, you know, form a good bond with and will see how to behave properly when you are off-leash. And then along the same lines, tip number three is avoid bad influences. There are a lot of dogs out there that are not necessarily good influences or not well-behaved. Um, maybe it's fine to hike with them, but keep them on leash if you're going to do so. Um, that way they don't learn these bad behaviors. Cause that definitely happens. You see that people that have one dog and get another dog, both dogs like switch their bad behaviors with each other and they, you know, it's just a challenge. So make sure that if you're going to go out and hike off leash, that you don't go out with a bad influence. And that goes for anything like, you know, my plan is if I get another dog at some point, it's probably going to be after my current dogs are gone. Um, or if I get one when they're older, then I probably won't hike with them all together because I don't want my new dog to learn bad habits from my old dogs, to be honest, like not being nice to other dogs. So just take that into consideration. And then tip number four is to try doing some other activity with your dog where you can build a positive relationship with them. So this could be anything from obedience classes, agility classes, trick dog classes, nose work classes, fly ball classes, um, 
I think, did I already say sheep herding? <laughs> um, sheep herding, hunt dog tests, earth dog tests, but especially like obedience and nose work and stuff. Tracking is a really good one um, because those are all ways that you are building a closer bond with your dog. And by doing that, you become a better team. So just like people in the military, you know, they all work like a well-oiled machine. Um, we talked about this a lot with like educators, like teachers having relationships with their students. Their students are more willing to give things a new shot and be more open and that kind of thing. Um, and more open to learning, the same is true with your dog. The more you do with them, the more time you spend with them, the more training you do with them, the closer bond you build, the more they trust you and the more you trust them. Um, and you know, you just also are building up that bank of trust as well as like the knowledge that they'll want to come back. You're kind of building that up. That way when you come to a difficult situation, they're more likely to make the good choice and come back to you. So that's really how I got started with my dogs was I started out um, before I was really into hiking by doing obedience and I took a couple agility classes and I did some other dog sports. Um, I still do sheep herding with Prima on and off. And honestly, doing sheep herding was really what helped her to be a very good off-leash dog. In my opinion, because when you're herding sheep, your dog is off-leash all the time. So, you know, you have to trust your dog with these animals that are very flighty um, and want to run away. <laughs> Uh, to not only not eat the sheep, but to bring them back, to lay down when you tell them to, to send them far away and then call them back. Um, so those are all habits that work very well with off-leash hiking and that's kind of how I got my start. So same goes with obedience, you know, if you do competition obedience, then you will have to be off-leash at some point. Same with agility. Um, so those are all good ways to build up that foundation and a fun environment where you can put your skills to the test if you wanna compete or you can just do it for fun, it's up to you. So I would highly recommend going that route, especially if you're having a very difficult time with your dog um, or just want something extra fun to do with them. Um, and it's great in the winter too. I really wish that I had more classes near me because I would definitely be doing that right now. Um, but it's a great way to stay active and keep your dog's mind active during the winter when it's a little bit harder to get out sometimes. And then tip number five is just to keep a very close eye on your dog. I know that when I'm hiking, especially with Skittles, who I just don't trust quite as much, I'm always keeping at least one eye on my dog. So like I said, I lived with them basically off leash in the wilderness for a month and a half this last summer while hiking the San Luis Loop. And even though I would be chilling in my tent with the doors open and the dogs off leash hanging about, I kept an eye on where they were, um, made sure to check in on them frequently. When I was hiking, I kept an eye on them frequently. And it's really important because as soon as you stop paying attention, that's when those difficult dogs will take advantage and run off. Um, Skittles is very good with wildlife. Um, I've seen elk with her, I've seen deer, marmots, chipmunks, all sorts of things. The only one or two times we've had problems have been when I've been, you know, just hiking along, kind of daydreaming, not paying as close attention, and that's when she saw it first and took off, um, and we had to lay down the law, um, versus when I see it at the same time or before her, I can just give her a little don't, don't think about it and just tell her, not even, you know, not a mean voice, just like Skittles, don't take it, um, and she'll be like, oh, okay. And you know, just give her, I just give her a couple of reminders and she's like, okay, like I would love to chase it, but I won't. Um, and that's really the difference. Like she has a ton of prey drive um, and so do herding dogs. Prima has a lot of prey drive, but it's controlled. Um, and that's something I kind of picked up from sheep herding. Sheep herding essentially is just controlled prey drive. So is off leash hiking. So you, it's not to say if you have a high prey drive dog, you can't hike off leash, but you need to be able to control it. Um, and help them make those good choices. And if your dog doesn't have high prey drive, then good for you, because that's gonna make your life a ton of easier. And I'm sure a lot of people are super jealous. Um, but seriously, like no matter what, you can hike off leash with almost any dog. It's just gonna take some more work with others. But hopefully all these tips will help you get started, kind of give you a foundation and some things to try, especially if maybe you've tried it in the past and had a hard time. Um, yeah, you just gotta get out there, um, spend some time training and give it a shot. So I hope this was helpful. I don't know, like I said, I'm not a professional dog trainer. So I would love to find out, um, do you currently hike with your dog or is that something you want to do? If you haven't hiked with your dog, is there a reason why? Be sure to let me know down in the comments as well as, as always, um, share your Instagram so we can check out your dogs if you want. 
And otherwise, um, you know, if you want to see more tips and tricks all about hiking and backpacking with dogs, be sure to subscribe again, like this video if you thought it was helpful. And otherwise, we'll see you guys next week and have happy trails.